I think I look at myself different than others. Usually I think others are like, oh, I'm ugly. I think I'm like, I, I have a cool idea of what I look like. And so I see myself in the mirror and then I'm like, ah, who the fuck is that guy? <laughs> that's good though. Why? I'm, sure that's, well, I'm sure that's what other people see in you as well. I see that. I think you're a really cool guy. I just don't know if I have the exact, exact thought of you that you have of yourself. That, that's no, what, no, like think that, about that's it. That's mixing me up. Think about it. You know when you look at yourself in the mirror? Yeah, you know, I know. So what you, a few see, times. what you see <laughs> might not be what other people actually see, like physically. I'm not talking, I'm not even talking about like your personality or anything else like that. Isn't that what we're talking about? Do you think that you're a, a positive or negative person, Charles? Same for you, Kara. Charles, you go first. I think I'm a r- real. <laughs> I think I'm a realistic person. The what? So a realistic person. So, so sometimes that? that's going to be positive. Sometimes that's going to be oh, negative. Go again. <laughs> Will you guys please realistic. commit to something? <laughs> Take a stand. <laughs> I think it just depends on. The of the minute? situation. Oh. You know? Okay, overall. <laughs> Over, okay, I think I, I can answer that. I think overall it leads a little bit more negative. And I and I and I don't like that, but I feel like the with the world I think it's more negative than what I would like. You know what I mean? I think that I still have a lot more hope I feel than than others. But I do think it's a pretty negative world. Does that make sense? <laughs> it does make sense. Because it is a negative world. And even if you're trying to be really, really positive, it's kind of hard when you're just hitting like a wall. So I, I would say I'm a very positive person. But man, it's hard because I hit that wall and it's like, son of a bitch. Yeah. <laughs> but I try to be positive. So then I stand back up and I'm like, no, 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 I'm going to be positive. And then just slaps you right again. It's like, son of a bitch. Mm-hmm. So I just had a... Converse, my, my, my friend was kind of dealing with depression and I told her, you know, we have four good days out of the month and then the rest are shitty. So just look for those four days. <laughs> How about you? Well, I always thought that I was positive and then I took a test, like a psych test or something, <laughs> one of those tests. Uh, and they said I wasn't. They said I was <laughs> more negative, more pessimistic than optimistic, I guess. But see, do you think that's do you think that's being negative or do you think that's being realistic? Because sometimes when I'm being realistic, people are like, oh, you're being negative. And I'm like, no, I'm not. I'm being real. Like, I don't know what to tell you. You know, I try to be positive, but I'm not going to sugarcoat things either. Sometimes things suck. Well, but I think it's more important to be positive for your for yourself, not for somebody else. Not to be, I shouldn't be worried about if I'm being positive or negative or optimistic or pessimistic to people. I should care more about how I feel about myself if I'm negative or positive. Oh, you mean uh, positive or negative? It doesn't matter. Isn't there a thing called, um, what is it? Narcissism? No. Mersoff? <laughs> Go ahead. You what's, don't know what that is? What's Murphy's Law? No, Murph. Murph. Oh, Murphy's Law. Oh, yeah, God. Murphy's Law. There you go. <laughs> Murphy's Law. I said something like that. I knew it wasn't correct. Is there, so, what exactly is that? Elaborate, please. Murphy's new. Law? Yeah. It's when something just knew was going to happen. What? I Did guess. you just say <laughs> <laughs> something was going to happen? <laughs> Something that you knew was going to happen, but you did it anyway. It was going to be a negative outcome. You did it. You Murphy's, knew. Murphy's Law. You didn't trust your uh, I intuition. Thought it was, I thought that it meant something like what can happen will happen. Oh, maybe it is. Oh, dear Lord. <laughs> I don't even know. Charles, do you know? Charles, do you know? <laughs> I, think, 
I think it. I think you guys just both said the same thing, though, didn't you? Say it's going to happen. She usually says what I say. Okay, in a different as way. The mixed law room. of nature expressed in various humorous, popular sayings to the effect that everything can go wrong will go wrong. No, it's slightly different. I'm saying what oh, okay. can go wrong will go wrong, and you're saying, isn't it just mean that everything's going to go wrong? No, what can go wrong? <laughs> will go wrong right um, and why are we asking that question oh, we're just talking about you know positive and negative oh. and realistic and pessimistic and all those things Murphy's you know what talking I was, one of the things uh, i like like about hanging out with the young younger people is just to get their perspective on stuff you know because i even though i'm 100 years old i still remember when i was young so I like just to get that, that get perspective. Well, sometimes it just blows me away because it's like some of the stuff that, like, she sometimes she doesn't just know. <laughs> like, I can't believe that she doesn't know that. But I can't, you know, I'm not, I'm 30 years older. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's really, but it's interesting that you guys bring a lot to the, to the table. And it's interesting watching the young ones. You know, I think the young, younger generations are all soft, but I come from the last of the generation that was kind of hardcore. The last? <laughs> I think so. Talking after about that, that. After that, it fell off. Talking about that, you said something about that you don't like being positive or negative or anything towards others. And then with what you just said right now, it made me think of how do you feel about when, like, uh, how can I put this in a polite, well, <laughs> I'm trying to be, yeah, I'm trying to be nice about it already, uh, is that like people promoting supersized models. Me and my friend were just having this conversation the other day because I kind of feel the way you just did, Leo, with, I feel like not only are we too soft, but we we keep people's feelings so much in check to where it could hurt them. As in, I feel when we're promoting supersized models that it's only, it's more negative than positive. I think, Yes, they're trying to make it come off as positive, but in the long haul, it's going to be a negative effect mm-hmm. on a lot of people. Because then it's just, then the ones that are out there, no offense to the ones that are out there. Come on. Who are these? Them. <laughs> come on. <laughs> they're just gonna, oh, I love myself. I love my body. And then they're going to be, the, the men are going to be encouraged to tell them, well, I love your body the way that it is too. When really it's that they're unhealthy. It's not that they're yeah. big, it's that they're unhealthy. You can be kind of thick and be healthy. That's a whole different story. Yeah. So it's being healthy and it's bad habits and it's things that are going to make your years. They're killing themselves. Years. And, you know, you're just causing. I say anger. if they don't have any kids, just let them kill themselves. Shut up. No, it's all relative. It's an arbitrary, you know. What What makes you a healthy God? Why, how are you the one judging that shit? Well, I don't think. I. I don't think it's about being a healthy God. I think it's we're, we're promoting people to be unhealthy, which blows my mind. Like they're like, everybody should be comfortable in their own body. Look at this. She's so beautiful. Is she beautiful? Yeah, but she's not healthy. Don't promote it to, to so others don't feel like they need to do anything. You know what I mean? Like we're, we're like, we're, we're telling them to kill themselves and like glorifying it, putting them on magazines and stuff. Same thing with smoking. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> oh, stripper now applies to you. That, that's a different conversation. Yeah, that's a different. Conversation. I wasn't even thinking about <laughs> that when I said it. But okay, for example, like with my nephew, he's a big smoker already, and he's sixteen, and he just thinks it's the cool thing to do. And he's like, "Yeah, you know, they make it out so cool, and vapings and the flavors. What they're doing is they're making it a positive thing, like they do supersized models." And then the kids are like, oh, oh, I can do that. It's something for me. Why can I do that? And they get, and in the end, it's negative. Same thing. Yeah, I, I've been smoking around that age. I've been smoking for 17 years now. And I cannot quit to save my life. I have a trick. Yeah, tell them your trick. I did. I heard. I heard on the last podcast. I Was it? Yeah, because didn't you say, I don't know, you uh, you had uh, 21 cigarettes or whatever, the pack, and then uh, you had yeah, one for right. a day, and then you took one out, right? And then Who's the sleeping? next. Yeah, and then uh, Homegirl was like, that sounds like it would take forever. And I was like, no, actually, that sounds that sounds pretty legit. That might work. 
that yeah. sound like well it did work for you but that that sounds like it would slowly and slowly you just get a little bit more nicotine out every day it's based on physiology now you gotta, now you gotta do it so that if it works he has another product to sell. <laughs> I'll be your uh, your guinea pig for that. Yeah. yeah, that's the only way we have to know because he's crazy. So you know he's what? not normal. You're not. Normal. <laughs> <laughs> if you girls can do it and it actually works. Then I'll believe it. Wow. <laughs> Tell me what you really feel. Hey, now you're getting it. On another, well, it's the same note, but it's back on the old note that we were on. Um, talking about how you said you like to be around us younger ones yeah. and how it's different. Yeah. Well, being around my nephew at 16, it's so different. You know, one thing that just really just oh, I hate it so much really hurts is uh, they call fights now fades. Fades? Yeah, fades. Charles, have you ever heard of that? Please God say no. Fades? Yeah, like I want your fade. No, no, I don't know Wait that. This is fight, yeah. like fighting. That's how they call it I want your fade. Yeah. I, I want, want your fade. Yes. I, I want, want your, your fight. Fade. Okay. I guess that works. I don't know. So stupid. I'm like, what does that even mean? Like, I, I, I've read a conversation between two girls around 16 years old, and I didn't know what they were saying at all. At all. See, now you know how I feel. It was nuts. <laughs> Sometimes like I we just are getting stupider. No, because this is a good example. I get like that every once in a while. You'll talk to me. I have no fucking clue to what you said. I know, but it's from your generation. We're just getting more dumb, more dumb, more dumb. So it's not our I, fault. I just I still use probably words you use, Leah. I use like dude and tight and yeah. You know? <laughs> dude and tight. <laughs> I think yeah, I, the words. We actually used to say when I was a junior in high school. We used to use the word cherry. Oh man, that's cherry. What? That's what was it? What, did, what did that mean? Like, like cool? That type? nice, beautiful cherry. <laughs> that's really cherry. And it was bitching. Oh, that's so bitching. Bitching. I like saying bitching. And then in high school, a big one for us was like, that's epic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. I don't know what ours was. We probably have to ask it, guys. Oh, God. Charles, how old are you? Hey, you're not supposed to, in this day and age, you're not supposed to ask a guy's age. We can't ask yours and you get all offended. Right. Don't answer it, Charles. Don't want I'm it. not because she tried to get it out of me the other day. I found out that she's a lot younger than me. I was like, oh, you're a baby. So she was like, how old are you? And I wouldn't reply. I kept on like going around it <laughs> and I'll, I'll just keep on doing that forever now. Okay. <laughs> oh my God. Well, I support your cause. How old do I look? And if you get it, I'll tell uh, if you get it on. I'll tell you yes. If not, then you'll just guess forever. Thirty-one. Oh damn! Yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> I had to think for a second. Did you see me? I was like, "Am I thirty-one? <laughs> yeah, I'm thirty-one. <laughs> so how does how does that answer seriously? How does that make you feel? Well, I feel forty-eight, at least. When I get up, when my alarm goes off in the morning, you know, that loud, like, burn, burn, burn. All I hear in my head is like, I don't know. It's, I feel like uh, like I have done construction for 65 years in the summer. <laughs> That's a good picture. You know, you just need to rub like CBD oil all over you before you go to bed. I, I, need, I think I need like straight heroin or something. Uh, what? No, back to, the, to your, how, how that made you feel. Um, I mean, how does that make you feel? Does she, I mean, first of all, you, you do you feel like you're 48 or do you think yeah. you look like you are? Um, I think both because wow. uh, I, I was sponsored by a, a couple of like local shops. So I, and I was never good at skating. I'm never, I'm not really good at anything, Leo. What I try to do is so in skating, when I was a freshman, I would hang out with all the senior skateboarders and I would hear what they wanted to do. Like, oh, wouldn't it be cool if we did tricks off this roof and stuff? And they were always like, wouldn't it be cool? You know what I mean? Like, and I would be like, I'm going to go do it today. So I would just, and you know, the same with video editing. I, I hear people like, wouldn't it be cool if we made a movie? I'll go do it. So I just hear what people are doing and be like, hey, just go fucking do it. You know what I mean? I'm not good. And, uh, and uh, so, you know, a little kid jumping off a roof got a lot of eyes on me. So, but my dad would always tell me like, hey, 
keep on jumping off that roof and see how you feel at 20. And yeah, like, uh, I feel like I'm dying. And not only that, but, uh, I never get carded for cigarettes or I had this girlfriend once and we bought beer and a video game. I bought the beer. She bought the video game and I didn't get carded and she bought a video game that you had to be 16 and over. And then she got carded. Oh yeah. So I, yeah, I think I look old. So when she said 31, I actually felt great. I was like, Oh, thank you. (laughs) Thank you that you didn't say older. It's all perspective. Maybe they're just goody two shoes and they really wanted to follow the rules because I did that when I had to card people. I knew that they were old enough, but I still carded them because I was a little goody two shoes and I didn't want to get caught that one time I didn't do it. You don't know because I get carded. You know what happened to me one time? I'll tell you what shocked the piss out of me. I was in Paris and after one of the, I was doing like the bodybuilding thing over there. After um, one of the shows, we go out at night, I went to this nightclub, really nice upscale nightclub. And while I was there, I didn't realize, but it was very ever so subtle that I got hit on by a guy. Not oh, by his Leo. Leo, I get hit on by guys all the time. And it makes me <laughs> like what kind of, what kind of vibes am I throwing? I get I probably get hit on by more guys than girls. So I don't know what kind of vibes I'm throwing out. <laughs> I would say estrogen. <laughs> Hey, I, I didn't catch on to what was going on. And I thought to myself at, at some point, I said, this guy's hitting on me. <laughs> it was a very odd, I didn't know. Did you know it was a guy? Well, I, I looked over and I realized that I was being hit on by a guy. How were you being hit on from behind? Uh, the way he was touching me. <laughs> <laughs> oh. You guys don't do that. I was like, you know. Touching the lower off. back. <laughs> Maybe this is the same thing that you earlier in the podcast how it's just your perception oh <laughs> i guess i really struck a nerve with carl <laughs> it is starting to lash at me <laughs> <laughs> but you know like i said you that's part and that's maybe another reason i'm not sure i'm just answering for you that maybe you don't want to come on camera or maybe you'll learn to about that no okay anyway not at all. There's just not enough room on the camera for me. <laughs> with your head. Bless with you your head. head. He's yeah, making this shit personal. There's no room for me in the camera. Personal. You've got so many personalities just coming off of you. Charles, seriously? You got more guys hitting on you than girls? Uh, No, but it's a lot. But, but it's, oh, a lot. Well, it's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. Is it something, is it like a cologne or something that you're wearing at the time? Or can you narrow it down to why this is happening? Uh, I don't, I just, uh, what, <laughs> this one gay dude, when me and my uh, my ex broke, my kid's mom, we broke up because we were together for a long time. He, he came to me and he like, he like put his hand on my lower back and he was like, hey man, I need to be serious with you right now. And I'm like, he's like super close, you know? So I like turned slowly and he's like, in the straight world, dude, you're like right here. But in the gay world, you'd be up here, man. Give me one chance. And I was like, uh, <laughs> help. <laughs> I was like, I, I'm sorry, man. Like, you're you're really cool. But I just, I, I don't go that way. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> you know, I don't know what it is with the world out there. I don't ever get hit on by guys. Because you're negative. Or girls. <laughs> Or the end I, can, I see your pessimism. It's walking like a billboard on you. <laughs> what? <laughs> I think that you have a very strong look. Like, very, like, you don't fuck around. I have a strong look? Intimidating, almost sounds like. Intimidating look. Let me say that. Like, you look like I wouldn't take anyone's shit. Oh. So, so basically, I, you're just keeping away all the assholes. Yeah, probably. It's probably it's probably benefiting you more than you think. <laughs> Look at that positive. Oh, just come out of that. Really positive, Charles. <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> I think it just changed my whole mindset around now. Mm-hmm. For a while there, I was actually like, kind of sad about it, but now I'm thinking, wow. It's actually it quite, might be a good thing. Yeah, I think it outweighs the negative. 
Okay, so then why? I don't even get hit on by girls. Well, I think it's weird when guys chase girls anyway. Like, I don't, it's always super weird. And like, like, uh, do you guys go to bars? I never go to bars. Do you guys go to you bars? Go to bar, <laughs> not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> the last bar I was it's, in was in Vegas not too long ago. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for the Vegas thing. For the Vegas. I got to stay here, and I saw all of you guys having fun. <laughs> but, <laughs> no, I have no, not in a long time. You never go to bars? No, because it's it's just disgusting. Like, I see, like, like I don't, it's just, I don't, even, I don't even know how to get into it. It's just, I watch guys, like, chasing girls or, what I don't know, trying to get at them, and it's just, it's disgusting. <laughs> I'm like, if, I don't know. Hey, from, Charles, from a Charles, male let's go or to a bar and let's sit down and people watch together and you can point out all these things that you're seeing. Oh, that sounds like a lot of fun. <laughs> right? Just people watch. I want to see all this. I've gone to bars a couple of times. I really haven't done them a lot. I probably could can on my own. Where are you going to bars at? In Tulare or Visalia? Pixley. <laughs> yeah, and I feel like Visalia is the worst. It's like, I don't... I don't want to be negative, but it just like when I go, I, I feel like <laughs> super ghetto and nasty and like I had to take like two showers when I get home. And then I look in the mirror and I'm like crying and I'm like, you're somebody's father. It's just gross. I feel gross. Oh, my gosh. Charles, are you male? <laughs> <laughs> so dramatic. Fuck. Because this is all I really have. No, wait a minute. This is all the experience, though. You're an actor, aren't you, Charles? Um, some would say I, I act in a lot of things, but I don't like, I like looking at myself as a filmmaker, as in, I don't like calling myself an editor. I don't like calling myself a director, anything, sound actor. I'm just a filmmaker. I'll, you throw me in anything and I'll try to do it. You know so what I mean? You acting when you were talking about your bar experience and having to take two showers? <laughs> Maybe slightly. Maybe <laughs> slightly. <laughs> it was good. <laughs> you, you pretty much nailed it. Thank you. Get a going for the award this year. Yeah, uh, you know where we used to go. It was pretty fun. My my day. Uh, it's called <laughs> the drive-in. The drive-in. We just do, we used to do that. Don't laugh. <laughs> I wish big. we still had the drive-in. Uh, Me too. What's that on Main Street? At the end of Main Street. All the bankers hang out there. The what? The, the what? The bikers. <laughs> bankers. Bikers. Oh, the olive? The green olive? Or no, the... that was one but in the later years. But no, it's, it's on East Main Extension by the railroad tracks. It's been there forever. I can't think the of The one that don't have a floor and it's all dirt? Yes. Oh, that's nasty. Pump that house. one. Pump, pump house. House. Yeah. There you go. They don't have a floor? No, we see a peanuts and just throw them on the ground all the dirt. Yeah, it's dirt. Uh, I went my my for parents. Your birth, Charles, uh, for my birthday, I just not this not this year's birthday because we were in a uh, quarantine. But last year, I went on a hike for my birthday and stuff. And then my mom and then we're like, let's go to a bar. And I'm like, it's my birthday, but sure. As in, I don't drink anymore. So I'm like, like <laughs> we're going for you guys, but sure, let's go. So we go and they take me there, and I've never been there before. And as soon as I walked in. There was like four bikers there. There's no floor. It's all dirt. And it looks, there's like one broken light in the corner. And it's like, looks like you go there for a good old fashioned raping or something. And I was like, what? it was like three <laughs> seconds. Oh, wow. And I was like, <laughs> three seconds in. And I was like, guys, we have to go. And we left. I was like, uh, uh-uh. that was, it was, it was sketch, super sketchy there. That, was- that place never closed down. Not, it was open 365 days a year. I used to go when I was what, training at my club in Visalia. I had a client who owned one of the motorcycle shops. Uh, I can't think of the name of that either. But anyway, uh, we'd go sometimes instead of working out at 6 a.m., we'd go over to the pump house and drink. And there was the professional drinkers going at that hour. I can promise <laughs> you that. They're the pros. That bar was packed. They're still there, Leo. <laughs> Are they? Oh, yeah. No, I, I, I'm like, I haven't been in the bar. Well, Vegas, but otherwise. That wasn't really a bar. It wasn't really. It was a hotel. <laughs> yeah, right. What do you, What do you guys like about being on? Huh. That it's hopefully longer until I die. 
I really don't want to die. Like, yeah, I have, I have severe depression, like really bad, but I think what's like, no matter how depressed I get, I don't know. I just always like, I don't want to die. Like ever, I would, I would love to live forever. I like, even though it's so weird. Cause I mean, I battle with depression, like really bad, but like, I love a lot of stuff about life that I don't want to give up yet. <laughs> well, that's really good. Yeah. Your kids add to that because I can say that, I mean, I, I wouldn't have like been sad if I had died back then, but now that I have a kid, I want to live forever. Yeah. I, uh, I, I know a lot of people that don't want kids. Like they're like, kids are just not for me. Or they're like, I freaking hate kids. I can imagine having kids. And I'm like, I've done a lot of, I think I've done a lot of cool stuff in my, in my life. Like I, uh, I used to be an amateur bike racer. I, I was sponsored by a couple of things on skateboarding. I, uh, I've opened up for pro bands and pro bands is closed for me. And when I was in a band, I got a job at edit, editing for Leo and other people professionally. And out of all of that, I felt like I, I feel like life is completely useless and you're kind of wandering around in the dark until you have kids. It like, it finally gives like your life, like you, you feel like you weren't living until you have kids. That's a really good way of putting it actually. Apparently you didn't feel that way? No. Yeah. <laughs> no. I mean, yeah. Like, oh. Those words, like he was really, no, yeah. he was really putting it in the right way there. I, I think that's an interesting perspective because uh, what I want would add to that is uh, obviously I love my kids. Okay, there's no question about that. Uh-oh. But, <laughs> but, <laughs> but, I think the game changer for me, again, the kid thing is there's no question about it. But I think that the game changer, because at some point, your kids will always be your kids, but they're going to move on. Right now, the way you feel about your kids, it's you know, now's the time to cherish that because they go off and get married, you know, do various things if that relationship changes. But so what fulfills my life, because now my kids are out of the, you know, my life is in a spot now where it's much, obviously much different than when my kids were around. And my uncle once said it best. He said, you have to have something to look forward to each day. That was just something he made at the age of 80. And, you know, something, one of the best things that happened to me was that I got lucky. I was fortunate at a very, like, 27 years of age to find the passion of my life. The things that I'm doing for, like, just day-to-day stuff. What I wake up to every day, I can't wait to get up. I still get up at 3 o'clock in the morning. I'm so excited about that. And I think that if I don't, if I didn't have that, knowing that my kids will not always be, they'll be number one in your life, but they see a different way because they're apart from you a lot of times, right? Mm -hmm. So I feel for the person that's out there that is, has nothing to look forward to the next day because, you know, I saw it, I saw that with my dad and he didn't have hobbies and, you know, I mean, he, and it was tough for him and he relied on his kids more, you know what I mean? Um, so anyway, I just, I think the life without passion is, that's where you're dead in the water, I think. I know a lot of people that uh, don't want kids, don't like their job, don't really do anything. And I think that's why a lot of people from where we're at in Visalia, I think that's why you see so much people, like what they do is just go to the bar like almost every yeah. night. And I think that's because they don't have, they don't have kids or maybe they do sadly and but they don't have no hobbies or anything to look forward to um that makes me really sad though because i think about that all the time leo like i i cuddle with my kids all the time and i just like hold them and stuff and i'm like when they get to that age that they have their own life i am going to be devastated yeah devastated yeah. Mm -hmm. and I, I that's something i kind of learned from my dad because you know my dad he was a hard worker and and at some point he was uh, no, alone and then he also ended up in a rest home but he he relied so much and needed to be around us to keep him going you know it was that way and that was one of the things that I did not want to pass on to my kids 
I want them to love me, but I don't want them to think that I need them like that. Mm-hmm. You know, I need, I, because like what you're saying, if, if I don't think that way, you know, it's going to be devastating. I mean, you're going to have to, I don't know what you would end up doing. You're a creative person. So you'll find something to direct your, that loneliness. I mean, cause it is like that for a while. You hear that emptiness syndrome. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's real, but it's like, it is scary. You know, I mean, I think now at my age, like, what if my, you know, I go, I, I outlive my, my mate and I'm, I'm alone, you know, it's kind of, kind of weird to think about that shit, but I do. I try to put myself in that spot to try to feel that moment to see what I can do to avoid that, I guess, basically. Hmm. Do you feel like shooting yourself now? <laughs> <laughs> no, I just, I just, I'm not in the same boat as you because one, I'm not with somebody, so I'm pretty independent, and I'm fine with that. And when so you're, I can't and, and when you're young, you're invincible. You know, that's one of the things. Uh, one of my questions when I asked you that question, I was, I was wondering. For me, was you know, what's it like to be young, invincible? And you know, even I don't feel that way anymore, and I don't like it. Yeah, I can't imagine. I don't like it. <laughs> I, you know, I try to, my coach once told me, he said, when playing football, he goes, if you ever get hit, you know, and, and you're hurt, don't ever let your opponent see that, that's weakness. And I, I've been always like that, but I'm going to tell you something inside. There are times I go out and like, you know, I, I wonder if I can still rise to the occasion if I get attacked out here, you know, oh, like, yeah, just stupid yeah. shit like that. Yeah, yeah. When I was 21 or 31, or you know, don't think about that. No, I think I'm pretty sure you could still handle think yourself, so? Leo. Yeah. You know, I think I can too. Especially if you run out there with the weapons that you grab when you get off, <laughs> when you know somebody's out there. I actually have chased some people off out here early in the morning. I have this big, Buf- you know who Buford Pusser is? Walking mm-hmm. tall. See, you guys are too young. <laughs> Walking tall. Anyway, he carried the a big rock. St- he carried a big stick instead of yeah. a gun. They made rock a remake. Or- yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And uh, so I have a, uh, we have like a stick in here where you do abs. It's like six foot, like a little pole, you know, wooden pole. Dow, I think they call that. And I've had, a ch- I've chased some people out of here, you know, those tweakers at 3 a.m., 4 a.m. in the morning. Yeah. And I think I could do it. Because I, that one time when you ran into a, a cop. <laughs> oh, yeah. I was, I was here again one morning. I, all of a sudden I see the flashlight, you know, in the window. Yeah, they're bright ass flashlight. Wow. Yeah. So and when it gets like that, I don't think I'm confrontational, but when I think there's somebody around my house or my place, mm-hmm. um, yeah, I get like in a different, whole different mode. It's weird. It's like a, a, I think it's my fight or flight nervous system. Anyway, so there's a, that, <laughs> I went out the back door to see what was going on. I took that stick with me and that light was moving away and I yelled at that light. And I, you know, to stop and turn around to the cops. The cops, for some reason, were out in this area. And I don't know for the life of me, but I was in this mode where he, he turned and he drew on me slowly. And, I mean, he put his hand like he was going to draw. And he said, mm-hmm. put the weapon down, the, the pole. <laughs> but, you know, anyway, so I get like that. I, <laughs> I wouldn't normally do that. So it comes from somewhere that I'm not really sure. You know, it's amazing what we can do, like, when we're up against the wall sometimes. Would you agree? Yeah. They must have felt that coming off of you. After they left, I, I got really pissed about that because I'm thinking, you know, I've been here for 12 years at that point, for 12 years, day in and day out. And, you know, my truck has been there. I know I'm, I'm part of the cops. And why didn't you just come to the door? I don't know. I just couldn't figure that, that whole deal out. That guy could have got me killed if he would have been like a rookie cop, maybe with a trigger finger. That could have got me killed because I didn't know I was who I was dealing with. Possibly. But you I have to think side of it. Maybe they thought that somebody had broke in. I mean, you get here like it's crazy hours. I know. So maybe they thought that one of the homeless people broke in. They're in here showering. <laughs> okay. You gotta look at the glass half full. Well, I'm I'm just saying I you know I can second guess it. I'm being an armchair quarterback. Whatever. I uh, 
I uh, I was filming once at a Bank of America in Tulare. You guys know the one downtown? Yeah. 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 And uh, we thought it would be a great idea to act like we're robbing a bank for a movie scene. So, uh, yeah. Whose idea was so, that? Uh, it, it, it was probably mine. And uh, <laughs> I, uh, so we put all these signs up. They were pretty big. They were pretty big poster signs that said, hey, filming a movie, prop weapons and stuff. And uh, it was me and my two friends. And we had these, we have like $500 airsoft guns, which means they look legit. Like they look really good. We've used them for some of the TRS videos and stuff. Uh, they, they look real, you know, and we, we, we were running up to the bank. We, we were not at the bank. We were like 200 feet away from the bank. And uh, so we had all these machine guns and then like these 10 cops pulled up weapons drawn and everything and we're like put what? your fucking hands up yeah so they're like put put the fucking guns down so i was like it's fake it's fake and he's like put it down and they made us like throw them and put our hands against the wall and stuff and they were checking all of us and uh the whole time i was just thinking not if i was gonna get shot or anything like that i was like please don't take these guns away because we had like five of them <laughs> and they were like 500 a piece so i was like please Please don't take these guns oh away. Oh my gosh. Ten, they, ten cops? Yeah, it was a lot. It was a lot. Okay. Yeah, it's a thing too, like right by Bank of America, the police station's probably right oh, yeah. by there, you know? So they're probably like, hey, people have guns next to Bank of America. Just like all, all of them going, yeah. you know? <laughs> yeah, so, so did they buy your story? And what kind of consequence was that? Can you do stuff like that without having to pull a permit or some shit? Uh, I always use the same excuse that's got me out of everything. I'm like, I'm so sorry. I'm a film student. And uh, <laughs> once they hear film student, they, they're they're always pretty cool. I got the guns back and everything. This has happened twice to – this has happened – the cops have came a whole bunch of times while we're filming and asked if we had permits and stuff. We tell them we're filmed. But it's been twice where weapons have been drawn. One was at my last job at a hotel. Uh, we were filming with a, like a – what are those swords called? Like those ninja swords? You know? Yeah, yeah. We had those and a machine gun, but we hit the machine gun before he came. So they just saw all these big ass swords and shit. So, yeah. You made some interesting. Did you get those back? Yeah, we've never got anything taken away. I would cry. I'd be devastated. Those things, like, they're a lot of money just for like one little thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's crazy. He's one of you, though. <laughs> Who? Charles. One of you and your kids. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I've had no experiences, so I'm not in the story. I've had lots of experience with cops because I was a skater beforehand. So skaters and cops are like jelly and pepper. It doesn't go, you know, <laughs> like at all. I can see that. Because you guys are just using the town as your little playground. Yeah. You know, and the skate park basically got made. I go to the skate park now, but I mean, when I was in my heyday, there was no skate park in Slurry. So it was all street skating. That makes sense. The skate that I used to have had steel wheels. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, Charles? Are you talking about a skateboard or like actual roller skates? No, skateboard. Uh, Yeah, I uh. The wheels were not like they are now. They were like metal of some kind. Yeah, I had a, I've had older skateboards when I was growing up. Never that old though, but old, like where the wheels weren't the that same. Old. <laughs> That's old. That's real. The 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 like the oh, uh, is it urethane? What do they use now? I can't think of what it's called. The that weird plastic they use. They've been using that since I think the like the late eighties or something. But you're talking like pre that, huh? You're talking. Oh yeah, talking, like talking prehistoric. <laughs> <laughs> I used to skate up and down my, my grandma's uh, driveway, and you, it sounded like a, a Mack truck coming in. You know? Was it uh, one of those little little uh, banana boards? I think they're called now. I don't know what they were called in your day. They were like really small, though. No, <laughs> yeah, well, they weren't that big Are compared banana, to now. Banana boards, like literally, not even close to half of your arm length. Yes. Okay, I think I got one of those for a sec. Whose arm length are you referring <laughs> as, as a average serving size? Mine! <laughs> because it could be, well, I mean, that's hey, been... Hey, you know, I heard a theory about How arms. about the, 
Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so um, if you put your arms straight to the side, you extend them all the way, and somebody measures you from your the tip of your longest finger to the other tip of your other finger, then that size, if you double it, is how tall you are. Nah, this looks way too big for me. <laughs> no, seriously. No, seriously. <laughs> We were at a kid party, and us parents, that's how we were entertaining ourselves, and it worked on everybody. Seriously. Double? Are you sure double? I don't think so. You'd be like 7'2". Yeah, yeah. I'm like, I'm, I'm a, I know I'm short. So I'm like looking at it, and I'm like, no, this is like eight times taller than me. Maybe not double. <laughs> you, you, <laughs> Maybe you have to add a certain amount, but... I'm sure like there's that. more to the equation. <laughs> <laughs> All the important part. Uh, <laughs> Like ten or eight, maybe I don't know. Yeah, I think that's too too big for me. I I might I might just be misproportioned. I don't know. That's a good point. And yeah, very plausible. I don't know. Now we're gonna have to try it. Plausible. I think my my legs are really short. I know when uh my son was in the stomach, the doctor looked and he said uh he was like a doctor that's not from our country, you know. But he's okay. over here now. So they, you know, they're, they they talk slightly different. And he was like, he, I'm pretty sure he has retardation. And I was like, <laughs> what? Yeah, I was like, excuse me, say what? <laughs> like, I'm thinking all these things like, oh, my God, oh, my God. And he's like, his legs, retardation in the legs. He's going to have. And I was like, what, what do you what do you mean? And then uh, the nurse was like, he's going to have short legs. And the doctor's oh, like, oh, oh yes, yeah, short legs. And I was like, oh. Yeah. Oh my god! I was like that. I was so scared, you know. I was like, I don't know. That's a hard life. <laughs> but uh, I was like, oh no! You just mean he has his dad's legs. Okay, I got it. <laughs> Your legs are that short? I'm short, homegirl. How tall are you? Five seven. Was <laughs> it? Go ahead. I'm five seven. How about you, uh, Carl? Care whoever you are. How tall are you? Five one. How tall are you? Five one. How tall are you? Five one. Uh, five nine and a half. Charles, you're almost at Leo's size. No, Leo, that's it. That's a that's a good average man size. I, I don't know. <laughs> you're lucky. <laughs> I definitely don't. You'll see. Friends. When you get older, it's smaller. Circle gets real tight. Real, real, real. Small. Real tight. Do you think it's because of you getting older and realizing stuff? Or do you think it's more of you starting to realize what you want to do in life and putting more passion towards that? And it weaves out the friends that kind of do nothing with their life. Uh, you just nailed it. Uh, which one he said too? No, you just nailed it. Yeah. He said too. Which and one? I hate, I hate most people. <laughs> that, that helps. I, I actually don't like most people. I'm in the people business, or I used to be, mm -hmm. but most of them I don't like, I would say. All right, the I would older say, I get, the less I'm starting to like people. Well, <laughs> I don't know. It's just, and, and what you said, you know, you start uh, realizing that there's toxic people that have no place in your, you know, life, and you start keeping those people out, not putting up with that. I think that's part of it. So, so you think it's the first thing? Because I did. I said two different things. You know, I said, uh, I said, do you think it's you getting older and realizing that people's full shit, or do you think it's because as you start getting uh, a passion of something in life and putting all your energy into that, you lose the friends that don't really have anything going for them? Like they don't have. Like we we kind of talked about earlier. A lot of people don't have hobbies and stuff. Yeah, that's yeah, the first one. <laughs> the first of the two. I, th I think for me, it's the second one. I think the more I get into like when when I started making mo well, anything, skateboarding, music, but really the, the, the movies is what really did it. I lock myself into like learning as much as I can and doing it as much as I can that like people will be like, hey, you want to go out today? You want to go hang out? You want to go drink? And I'm like, no, I'd rather be like focusing on my craft, doing like something productive that's going to that's hopefully going to take me somewhere. And uh, I feel like that's a waste of time. I'd rather be doing something. See, I think I'm, I think I'm both. That's what I think. Because for me, once I like got married and had a kid, I didn't want to go out and do all that stuff. 
I had more important things at home. I had experiences I wanted to have, memories I wanted to make. And then also people just change and they get crappy and you need to pull yourself away from them. So I've, I've gone both routes. What makes somebody, and for both of you guys, what makes them want you to take them out of the, your life? Like Leo, a minute ago, you said toxic. But what's toxic? Is it their energy? Is it things they say? Or is it actions they do? What probably, What is or is it? Probably them being more dramatic than I am. Oh, shit, Leo. <laughs> You've called me dramatic like eight times on this podcast. <laughs> what's that? <laughs> I said, you've told me I'm like, you've told me like eight times I'm dramatic on this podcast. I'm about to be kicked out of your life. Huh? <laughs> she's on our, uh, on our other podcast, we talk about how I'm dramatic. So now it's this big joke on here that, you know, sometimes he's dramatic most of the time. When the more podcasts you'll listen to, I point out how dramatic he is. And it's mm. really not me. I never knew that. I never knew I was emotional. <laughs> I just, oh my God. It's like more than a girl. I, I've been told that. <laughs> I don't believe it. I don't care about your opinion, so it, it just blows over. I think for me, though, um, you know, kicking people out of my life, it, um, it has a lot to do with it's stress. And they're causing me stress from either making really, really poor choices, and I try to open their eyes to things. And everybody tries and you just can't do it. It stresses me out. Like, and I can't do anything about it. I can't control them. But the fact that I can't control the situation stresses me out. Or if people are just stressing me out because they're way too much up my butt or I don't know, any other kind of thing. That's when I start to see it differently. And I'm like, oh, I just got to get these people out because it's just killing me inside. So that's me. It's a toxicness, but it comes from mainly stress. Or just being ruthless. I've had some really ruthless people in my life. You guys have any very good friends or best friends that you that that does describe some of them, but because they're like, you just have a special relationship with them, you let it slide compared to other friends. I think that to an extent you'll do that if you have like a best best friend. And I mean, I would even bring my best friend up. She's not perfect, nor am I, but you know, you're going to do things that irritate somebody else because you don't think that you're doing something wrong, but they may take it a different way. But for me, I always like, if she ever did anything that kind of irked me a bit, I really didn't give a shit, but it was more because I knew that that wasn't something she was doing on purpose. Maybe she had had a couple of glasses of wine and she didn't really know that she had did that. So I always gave her the benefit of doubt because I knew who she really was. And when you make like a best, best, best friend like that, I think that, you know, little petty stuff like that, it's just, you just overlook it. Kind of like a marriage, you know? Yeah. Would you agree, Leo? Um, I guess. <laughs> <You're pretty laughs> no, I'm he's, all, he's all, what were you guys saying? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I think, though. Best friends. I mean, that's really kind of foreign to me. My when I when I no seriously, at this age, because like when I was in high school, okay, my best friend was was uh, Greg Wilkinson. Okay, I remember that. My best friend. But you, you guys, you girls, you guys keep hanging on to your best friends. No, because my best friend wasn't in high school. And you're saying it's like a relationship for fuck's sake. It why is. does why my best friends now are not around me, well, but we're best friends. It depends. So I met mine in sixth grade and I kept that one person as like a sister all up to being an adult where I'm at now. That's I have a, my best friend. I have a best friend since third grade. See, it's the ones that you get at a young age and you just, you guys click and you keep them there and it's more family than a friend. Yeah, for sure. These other friends that come in, it's like, Oh, this is my best friend too. I've had a lot of best friends, but like, Amanda, my best, best, best friend. That I know Amanda. Yeah. I, why do I feel like I know that? Yeah, I saw you post a like you said something, and I was like, "Hey, I know him. I, I love Amanda. She's like one of the nicest people ever." Yeah, she's great. But yeah, you know, you just meet them at a young age, and then they become family. They're not friends anymore. You can't just. I mean, I guess you can run your family off or cut them off or whatever to a certain extent, but. 
you don't. Having a best friend for me, like the way you're explaining, and you two, that stresses me out. <laughs> I'm sure it, 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 it sometimes it is. And uh, but this is the one person I think that if there is something that pisses me off or him off or hurts your feelings or whatever, you know what I mean? This is that one friend that you could. I think what makes a best friend sometimes like friends like this, like the family friends that like a uh, homegirl was saying, she's like, this is more like family is that you could actually sit there and talk to them. Like, Hey motherfucker, you're pissing me off. And you guys could have a talk back and forth without it getting like stupid, like other people. Did you have that relationship with your best friend? Um, I think our relationship continues to grow. And so, so the answer is no, no, it's like, that. <laughs> it's like a relationship. So you have to learn how to communicate in relationships and you're going to have little fallouts and then you're going to learn how to communicate and come back from too that. Much no, too much fucking work. Too much energy. <laughs> I school, about a fucking waste of time. But you know what? Jesus, we always, fuck. we always go back. We always go back. We oh my God. Do we stay away? Do you still get it's that like same thrill when you always go back? <laughs> it's, it's, you know, could you write off, a, like, could you write off a brother or a sister? Or, yes, I could. Or a mom and a dad? I could. And not ever go back? Well, I don't know about that, but I have written my, uh, one of my siblings off. Oh, yeah. And I mean, you know, I've had... And, go fights. ahead. I've had fights with my best friend and we've stopped talking for, I don't know, maybe like a year. And then, and then somehow you just go back and it's like, there was no time that was left in between. Charles, do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Me and, uh, when we, when we started the YouTube page, we kind of blew up really fast and it was early YouTube. So if we would have stuck with it, oh, oh my God, we were blowing up really fast. Every video we did was getting hundreds of thousands to tens of thousands of views. And, uh, Are you sure you're dramatic? <laughs> No, 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 no. I can't. Like, wait a minute. Let me. He didn't buy that know. shit for one minute. No. Charles. No. Uh, <laughs> like, like, she was like, this guy's. I just saw a great opportunity. Keep going. Go ahead. Show you. Leo, look at this. Tell her. Can you see this number? <laughs> no, I can't. It's like, oh, wait. Hold on. Blind, Hold bro. on. What am I looking for? Oh. Number. Uh, 154,000 154,000 yeah wow yeah we uh we were so the first couple videos were blowing up and i think we just burned the fuck out of ourselves we were tired and one of the videos we got in a dramatic ass fight like way too dramatic and uh, we just weren't seeing eye to eye and uh we stopped talking for a good minute like we stopped talking for maybe almost a year and then we casually started talking here and then like here and there. And then it went back to like, you know, I, I talked to him every day. I call him on the phone. Like, Hey brother, like, how was your day? Wow. You, know? you need a best friend. That blows my mind. <laughs> you need a best friend. I, I've talked about like on the podcast over there with Musella a couple of times. Mm -hmm. Like we're mm -hmm. like a couple of old women, you know, every once in a while we, we'll talk to each other, make sure that you're all, all okay. But every day, every day, I don't know about I, I, I don't do every day. Ours is like in every day. Every it's it's a uh, it's probably at least five times a week. Okay. Unless unless we're going through like like if we're just both extremely busy, then maybe we'll go like maybe five days without talking, maybe. What happens then? <laughs> and then we and then that that next day we talk after five days it's probably like a two hour and a half conversation oh my god because we have to we have to catch up on everything now overcompensation see i guess that would be that would be like a girls night right there oh, <laughs> uh -oh. you know it's the same thing girls night when you get together for about three hours all you're doing is talking he's just uh we he's just been my best friend since third grade like uh i've had a lot of people come in and out of my life and he's never he never has. So that's always meant something to me. I think that's really a good quality about you, Charles, to be able to realize that. Yeah, that's a good way of putting it. Oh, I was like, where is this going, Leo? <laughs> <laughs> because he, he could have. He could have left your life. But yeah. Never did. Yeah, that's a good way of putting it. Mm. How many best friends have you had that have lasted like just years? Well, Russ, there's one, 25. 
25 Mil- years? Uh-huh. Oh, okay, yeah, that would count. Milton? Who? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, no, Milton. Okay. <laughs> oh, That's yeah. a good... Like, I've heard that name before. She said, who? Who? What are you now? <laughs> I think that was in one of your books. So, 30... Uh, was he in one of your books? Yes. Okay. You were the one that I was... Know, we're over the oh, party. my God. Uh, Milton is 30 years or so. That's the one that told you you were getting fat, right? That guy? Okay. Okay. So, I mean, yeah, I've had them. Those are, I would consider... Okay. That's so friends. Got two. Three. Mizala. Oh, Mizala. Okay. <laughs> Are you having lapses of memory? No. Oh, okay. I, just didn't hear I, I okay. think you're a life hustler. Like you're always, you're always, uh, you're on the grind, Leo. And I think you think that that kind of friendship, like that close, would slow you down. Wow. You know what I mean? I think that it, you're like, <laughs> I think you're just trying to run to the finish line, and you're like, all that stuff will just be a ball and chain. That's exactly right. Wow, that's really deep. I'm sure glad we have telephones. I could call them. You know, <laughs> you know to say that I hate to I hate to admit this in some ways, but uh, even as a father, because our our family life was with my kids and everything, it's always revolved around sports because they're very athletic, and we traveled. We did a lot of uh, three days, you know, weekends mm-hmm. stuff like that. But I I don't like to hang out too much with my family. I like when they come over. I love it when they come over, uh, but I don't know. There's just something about that. I just, I know some families that just hang out all the time with their families, lots and lots of times. And I don't, and I don't think that there's any, I, I, I love them as, you know, has nothing to do with hanging out with them. It's, I don't know. It just, it makes it, and that causes me a little anxiety. Has it always been this way? Yeah, I think, yeah, it is. And I guess it's just something I've learned from the way I was, you know, my parents were divorced. Maybe that was part of it. Or maybe you're just completely cool. Oh, um, shit. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> you know what? That's, that's a bunch of bullshit right there. I was actually uh, being vulnerable. Oh I was being vulnerable. <laughs> Piece of shit. Did you, did you have a stepdad, Leo? What's that? Did you have a stepdad? No. No? no. So just your mom and your, yeah. and your brother and sisters? Yeah, my, my dad. You know, it was uh, after my five years of age. <laughs> that probably has something to do with it. I think the reason my best friend and that relationship means so much to me is that uh, my dad left at a very young age. I had an amazing stepdad, amazing. But okay. my dad left at a, a very young age, and I think it did something to, for my worth. So my best friend sticking around th- this long, I'm like, yeah, fuck my dad. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like... Yeah, you get what I mean. I think, uh, I think your that family thing of you not wanting to be your, around your family probably has something to do with something in there at a young yeah, age. Yeah, I like when they come over. You know, I do. I dig it a lot. Oh my gosh! But I just I don't know. It's just uncomfortable. What I really was gonna say, which I hate, I hate admitting. But go ahead. What were we gonna say? What I was really gonna say is maybe you're just. Full, as in, like, complete. Like, like I feel... Oh, listen to this no, shit. How long did it take you to think about that? Ah, uh, she's back. She's back. Uh, oh, yeah, that's because that's because I was Capitulate, say. capitulate, capitulate. No, no, that's because it's what I was going to say, but then I was like, oh, you should say this instead. So, how, which one am I supposed to believe? Okay. I didn't really think that you're full of shit. I just saw a great opportunity, and nobody else is taking it. You stuck a dagger in me. Listen. I was listen. Pretty good. Yeah. But listen, I think that you're like very content. You're very full. For me, I like to have my family around because sometimes I feel that I need that companionship. I need to be around them. I need to like kind of get recharged. That's, so maybe you're just completely full. Do you and, see why I'm and right now? Oh, shit. <laughs> I, I hang out with my sister uh, after this podcast. I'm gonna go over. I go over every Friday. Hang out with my sister. That's so That's really weird. Nice. That's so weird. So weird to you? Yeah, so weird to me. So foreign. Anyway, um, and uh, Charles, I want to. Uh, hopefully, you had a good time and and. Oh, forward. it was. Fun. I've been yeah. waiting. Yeah, I've been waiting. Cool. It was fun. I'm glad that you came on. I learned a little bit more about you being in this setting. It's always the time of my life. You're you're okay. a great guy, Leo, and so yeah. funny. Very cool to hang out. Anyway, well. <laughs> what about my chopped liver? Yeah, I can fuck you now. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you later. Bye. Bye. Bye.
Bye, guys. Bye.